Glenn, could you explain how a 92 years old lady is so active and is able to do so many exhibitions all over the world from her, from her uh, hospital? Yeah. Um, you know, Kusama, I work, I work with many artists and have worked with many artists over the years. I've never met an artist who is as focused on her work and her career as Kusama is. She just lives and breathes her work. She has no other interests. She's only focused on her practice. And so she's, she's painting every day. She's, um, if she is working on a painting in the studio that she hasn't finished, she has it taken over to her, her room in the clinic and she continues painting there. She stays up at night and she does, she has all these amazing sketchbooks where she sketches ideas for new work or sculptures or whatever. So she's always working. She's always thinking about her work. And no, she's but extremely this is focused. Sorry, mm -hmm. this is thinking, but what about making so many shows? Now there are free shows in free galleries and also uh, exhibition um, in New York. In, in the Bronx yeah. uh, and soon in Tel Aviv and in Germany, it's a lot. Yeah, well, the, the exhibitions at, uh, I mean, the, the, an exhibition, a retrospective just opened at Gropius Bau in Berlin. That has been about three years in the planning and that show will travel to Tel Aviv. There's a show opening at Tate Modern uh, next month. And there's, um, the show at the New York Botanic Gardens, which has also been planned for several years. These are all exhibitions with um, borrowed work. Um, the, the show at Gropius Bar in Tel Aviv, the, our retrospectives. So that, that is borrowing work from across her entire career. Um, with the show opening at our gallery and David Svern and Ota Fine Arts, that is all new work. So we are showing, the three galleries are showing together this new series of paintings, My, My Turn and Soul, which um, she has been working on for about, I'd say about 12 years now. So it's, a, it's, it's, you know, it's a large body of work that she has been painting for 12 years. And so we are getting some of these paintings from, from the My Turn and Soul series. So it's a coincidence that everything happened, happened right now? It's not a coincidence. I mean, these have been planned for a while. The, the thing with Kasama is that there are so many museums that want to do shows with her. You know, there, we pretty much have a waiting list of museums for the next six, seven years who want to do shows with her. But as uh, I explained to you before, it's actually quite a small studio. So they can only work on one or two major projects at a time. So what, what we decided quite a while ago is that she doesn't do any more group shows. It's very rare that she will be in a group show. And also that if there is a museum show that it tours. So, you know, then that it means that the, the, the studio can work on one particular show, but it goes to several venues. It's not. So it may seem that she's doing lots and lots of shows, but sometimes it's one show traveling to three or four venues. And it takes several years planning and, and you know, the galleries, the, all three galleries are very involved in the planning process. And uh, you said there's only five or six persons in a studio, right? Yeah, it's a small studio. People have an expectation that it's a huge studio with dozens or hundreds of people working, but it's actually very small. And she said officially that she's ambitious. Yes, she is ambitious. That, that's amazing. In a way, she's, she looks like fragile yeah. mentally, but yeah. at the same time, she has a power of creation and an, ambitious, an ambition we, which are outstanding, right? Yeah. I think it dates back to the time where, you know, um, when she was in New York, when she, she, she moved to the States, I think it was 57, 58, and she spent about 15 years living mainly in New York, she was in Seattle briefly and then, and then moved across to New York. Um, you know, she was making incredible work and she was at the forefront of many different movements, including um, minimalism and, and pop and, you know, diff different things where she was really um, invented and doing things for the first time. And then, and then finding that some of her work was being copied 
uh, by her male counterparts. And those artists who were men and they were white and they were American were being taken up by the important galleries of the day. And she was not, you know, she was, she was, she was a woman and she was Asian. And she was being overlooked by the art establishment in New York of the day. And I think that really affected her. And I think, you know, when she moved back to Japan, um, you know, it, it, was, it was really tough for her that she felt that she was considered by her peers as a really important groundbreaking artist in New York in, in, the, in the 60s, but somehow it, that didn't translate into getting the shows or the sales that she wanted. And, and uh... now... And now I think that now that her success has, has, has come later in life, she is extremely appreciative of it. And you spoke about uh, artists, male artists copying you. What do you think about? Well, I mean, she, she, she told me the story about uh, Warhol, for instance, when, when she did this exhibition called The 1000 Boats, and she did silk screen wallpaper, which had probably never been done before at the time, and Morhol came to the opening and apparently was very admiring of the silk screen wallpaper and complimented her on it. And a couple of years later, he invited her to a show that he was having, and he showed the cow silk screen wallpaper for the first time. And she walked in and she was just so shocked because there was this, you know, silk screen wallpaper that she had, she had done before and that Morhol had seen. I mean, there are other things, you know, I don't know to what degree this is conjecture, but if you look at, you know, her diaries and, and, you, and, and, you, and you, you date certain works, she did uh, the first uh, Infantry Mirror Room about a year before Lucas Samaras then did, uh, and, and, you know, a mirror room. Wow. Um, another thing that people have mentioned and talked about, uh, the, the Oldenburgs, that um, Kusama was making these soft sculptures. She was friendly with the Oldenburgs and um, there is a strong um, suspicion that the Oldenburgs then got the idea of making soft sculptures from seeing Kusama's soft sculptures. So, you know, there I think there are many examples of artists in the town. Of course, artists all look at each other and feed off each other's ideas. Yeah. But I think for her, she felt that, okay, here, here were these men who were, you know, doing what she was doing, but then getting a lot of success and getting commercial success and getting taken up by, you know, the important galleries and that she wasn't. So that, that, was, that was tough, must have been tough for her. So it could look like a revenge? It's not a revenge. I don't know that revenge is a strong word, but I think she, um, yeah, it's, she's, I think she's been probably very motivated by that. 